Glad that everybody could be here. Welcome to Freedom House. We're going to raise the roof here, praising the Lord today. Uh, got a couple of announcements right off the get-go. Our welcome card. If you haven't filled one out, please fill one out so we can get our super database up to date. You can get texts and emails from Pastor Kathy and or myself. Uh, celebrate recovery Thursday nights. There we go, right here. And this, on the 25th, they're going to be celebrating their fifth anniversary. Woo-hoo! All right, there's going to be barbecue at 5.30. Uh, the service starts at 6.30. Uh, it's going to be in the park. So if you're normally here on Thursday night, on the 25th of August, you will be in the park celebrating the fifth anniversary of CR here. And the Dayton Food Bank and the Food Pantry, the Clothing Factory, all that stuff is going on over at the Baptist Church. See myself, Pastor Kathy, or Dave, which is not here. Uh, they also accept bottles. You can turn the bottles in there. Uh, and it all goes towards the Dayton Food Pantry. On Tuesdays at 6.30, they're doing this thing called something fitness. I don't know what all that's about. But if you're one of those people that really want to come here and do that weird stuff, you're welcome <laughs> to do that. All right? I'm not one of them, so, but you're welcome. And uh, next Saturday, the 20th. Yes, uh, the Dayton family and the Moore family, they have a calling to move to Oklahoma. We're going to send them off with a true blessing. We're going to bless them on the way, uh, uh, just that they carry on God's work there in Oklahoma. And there's going to be a potluck afterwards. So if you have a main dish that you would like to bring, side or, a, or a, side. a side dish, not a main dish, a side dish. I've been corrected. So whatever she says. All right, you guys got to listen to her. Maybe not party me, but you got to listen service. to her. Yes, a party after the service, and there might be a surprise. I don't know. Yep. Just one of those things. All right, let's worship the Lord together.
it all to peace Storm surrounded me Let it break At your name Still Call the sea to still The rage in me to still Every wave At your name Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus You silence fear Jesus, Jesus
for offering. <laughs> We're going to continue worshiping with offering today. So um, if you want to do it via, via the app, you can, if you know how. <clears throat> and or if you don't and you'd rather do it in person, their mailbox is open down there, of course, during this time of worship, anytime. Um, today's offering verse is not up there. There's no offering verse today, but I'm going to tell you a verse. Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you. That one, I love that verse that's been hitting me all week. Plans for a hope and a future, right? That's what he has for us. So it, um, just that in itself is enough for us to be able to bless him with what we have to give. <clears throat> Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've given us, Lord, and that you know us and love us and bless us with so much, God, even when we can't see it. We just ask that you would take the offerings today, Lord, and use them for your glory. Bless those who are able to give and bless those who couldn't give today, God. We just give the rest of this service to you, Lord, and thank you for your presence here and that you would do what you want with us. Speak to our hearts, change us, make us more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> That will ever come close No thing can compare You're our living hope Your presence, Lord I've tasted and seen Of the sweet where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flow. Your glory 
Place where I'll go, you've not already started. 
trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. 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 So something about this song, Trust in You, it uh, came to me when I was writing this sermon, and I want to give a thanks to the worship team for doing that last minute hoo-ha for me. I appreciate that. So trust in you. We need to trust in the Lord. Hold on a second here. <clears throat> Battling some laryngitis here. So we're starting a new sermon series, uh, Joseph. From the pit to the palace, and what some of the struggles that Joseph went through, and how he prevailed. Uh, we're going to be in the book of Genesis, chapter 37, if you're wanting to follow along. And our title today is, you're probably going to hear this many times, Dysfunctional Families. Oh, yes, right. That's all of us, right? Well, especially Rudy. So... <laughs> All right, got to throw somebody under the bus. I was going to throw everybody, but Rudy, you jumped up. So there you go. So first off, we'll start off in Genesis 37 two. Joseph was a young man of 17, and he was tending the flocks with his brothers, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Well, something about this tells me he's a young man, and he's a bit of a tattletale, right? I like to call them in my family, not tattletales. I like to call them informants. So they inform mom and dad what's going on, right? So do the other kids like it when there's an informant among them? Probably not. So Joseph caught a little bit of flack for that. And in Genesis 37, 3 through 4, now Israel, this is also Jacob, if you guys know your Bible, that his name was changed later to Israel. He loved Joseph so much, more than any of his other sons. Because he had been born to him at his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. Everybody heard of the coat of many colors? That's what this is all about. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him, and they would not speak a kind word to him. Wow. Kind of rough there, huh? Now, as a dysfunctional family, as a parent, do we sometimes have a favorite? All the parents in here, raise your hands. Yeah, there we go. Yes, we do. Sometimes we do. It's, it's, it's one of those things. It's, we're broken people, right? We're not. We're, we're going to get better, right? But one thing about this is I can really relate to that because I'm the youngest. And I tell you what, as a, as a young man, as a young boy, I got away with a lot. I don't know if I was mom or dad's favorite, but I tell you what, I got away with a lot. So, and I was an informant. I was a number one spy in my family. So dysfunctional. He loved him more. Is that kind of right as a father or any, any parent to love a child more than another? Nope. That's where this dysfunction kind of comes in. Right? He was proud. What does the Bible tell us about pride? Right? that we should set it aside, right? He did more for Joseph than he did his other sons, and his brothers hated him for that. Probably, I'm not saying they have every right to be, but they did. Again, I can relate, because being the youngest, my older brother and older sisters, they, uh, they picked up a lot of my chores. They, uh, I was able to get away with a lot. Well, he's the youngest, he doesn't know, but you know better, right? So it always falls back onto the older ones. Uh, anybody seen the movie Old Yeller? Oh, yes. Good movie, right? It's, it's an oldie, but a goodie. And that this doing this sermon reminded me so much of Old Yeller because there was a young boy in there that did nothing. He did nothing but like hunt frogs and skip rocks and did all this stuff. And his older brother out having to chop wood while his dad was away, right? So the youngest one got away with everything. Not saying that he was the favorite, but there was some favoritism there. 
In Genesis 37, 5, 7, and 8, Joseph had a dream. He says, listen to this. I had a dream. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field, and suddenly the sheaf rose up and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him even more. <clears throat> God had given Joseph a gift of dreams. God gives us all gifts. He gave Joseph this gift of dreams. He wasn't sure about it, but he wanted to share it. You ever wanted to share your dreams or your thoughts? And sometimes your family or friends kind of shoot you down? Yep, it happens. He was, uh, ever been teased or outcast because of your dreams or your thoughts by your peers or even your family? Again, dysfunction. In Genesis 37, 9 and 11, 9 through 11, he had another dream. This time the sun and the moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. When he told us to his father, as well as his brothers, his fathers rebuked him and said, you or will your mother and I and your brothers actually come to bow down to you? His brothers were jealous of him, and his father kept this matter in mind. So he probably lost a little face time with his dad when he told him about this other dream. Right? Hey, Dad, you're going to bow to me one day. Right? I don't think that's really what he said, but he lost a lot of faith in his uh, face time with his dad. <sighs> So now his brothers had gone to graze uh, their flocks in the field in Israel. Uh, and Israel, his father, came to say, I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. Go and see that if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks and come back to me. Bring the word back to me. Had to wonder about this for a moment. Why his brothers were out grazing the flock and he was home. Huh. Kind of sounds like he's got a little bit of a privilege there, right? Oh, he's the youngest. He doesn't have to go out in the fields. Again, dysfunctionality there, not sharing the wealth. His father showing a bit of favoritism. So Joseph found them, but he saw them at a distance, and they plotted to kill him. Whoa, the ultimate dysfunctionality here, huh? They're plotting to kill their own brother. Now, this is some serious dysfunction, huh? Teasing and bullying is one thing, but killing somebody? Wow, that's, that's pretty, pretty serious stuff here. So they talked about it. They said, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then, then we will see what comes of his dreams. So again, not happy with Joseph. They're ready to devour him. Reuben, this is one of his brothers, heard this, and he tried to rescue him. Let's not take his life, he said. Let's not shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. So his brother was trying to stick up for him. Everybody in our family has somebody that sticks up for us, no matter how dysfunctional we are. I know I did. My brother stood up for me a lot. My sister did probably more than my brother. Right? It's okay, Mom. He doesn't have to. It's okay. So again... Reuben was his friend, and he tried to save them from this fate. <clears throat> they, so then his brother stripped him of his robe. Again, this robe was something that was significant to Joseph and his dad. And I'm sure he kind of flaunted that, that everybody was normally in drab clothing, but Joseph had this wonderful robe that his dad made. So they stripped it of him, and they threw him in a cistern. The cistern was empty, so he didn't drown. Uh, they took his robe, spoke about that. So his brother sat down to eat a meal. They looked up and they saw a cavern of Ishmaelites, a caravan of Ishmaelites. They were on their way to Egypt, uh, Egypt to sell all their goods. So here's another thing that kind of bothered me in this. They just threw their brother in a cistern. And it's like, hey, you guys hungry? Let's sit around and have something to eat. Really, you talk about dysfunction. Man, you know, we're going to kill him. Oh, by the way, you want cheese on your sandwich? You know, it just doesn't, doesn't kind of hit home, does it? So, but Joseph was, how do you think Joseph felt? You know, they're up there like, hey, can you pass the sauce? You know, and he's down there, hell. 
right? It wasn't really that funny, but I thank my wife for believing in me. Yeah, it's just one of those things. In Genesis 37, 26 through 27, Judah said to his brothers, what will we, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and lay out our hands, and that way we won't lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother. Oh, wow, so there is a little morality in there. Our flesh and blood, his brothers agreed. Wow, so they kind of came to their senses a little bit. And that's so much better plan, right? Rather than killing them or throwing them in a cistern, let's just sell them as a slave. Better plan. So they sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites, and they took him to Egypt. Now comes a great cover-up. Ever tried to hide something you've done bad? Yeah, it wasn't me, Dad. It was this big elephant that stepped on my toy. It wasn't me that did that. It was somebody else, right? Everybody's made up these little white lies to cover up their bad doings. Again, more dif- dysfunction. It's not just in Joseph's family. It's everybody. Everybody is dysfunctional at one time or another. So maybe, rather than trying to cover it up, maybe we shouldn't just do it in the first place, right? Think about what we're doing, especially when you're going to throw your brother and a sister. Don't get any ideas, sisters. In Genesis 27, 20, or 37, 29 through 32, Reuben returned and saw that Joseph was not there, and he tore his clothes. That was just a sign of uh, mourning for somebody that had died. He thought that his brothers had killed him. He went back to his brothers and said, The boy isn't there. Where can I turn now? Then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, and dipped it in blood. They took the robe back to their father and said, We found this. Examine it to see whether or not it is your son's robe. Wow, the great cover-up. Now they're lying. Jacob, also known as Israel, tore his clothes and he mourned for his son for many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept. Why do you think he was weeping? Maybe because he loved him so much. Maybe because he was thinking that, wow, if things would have been different, if I wouldn't have been so dysfunctional, maybe my boy would still be here. I I don't know. It's not written in the Bible. But I do know that something like that, if my brokenness caused harm to somebody else, I know that it would hurt me deeply. Meanwhile, the... Midianites sold Joseph to, uh, in Egypt to, a, to Potiphar. There we go. I'll get it right here. So they, the Midianites sold Joseph to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials. He was a captain of the guard. Pastor Kathy will get into this come next Saturday, a little bit about that. So the rest of the story. So there's this new song that uh, I want you guys to kind of pay attention to. It, uh, it really plays, I don't know if it plays is the right word, but it really sends this message home about if we live in a dysfunctional world or we live in a dysfunctional family, right, and God give us a gift, what are we to do? Are we to surrender? Are we to forget about our gift and just have self-pity? Or do we carry on? For such a time, as this.
This is why you and me Just let me have your worry Don't let your life be Such a time as this I made you For such a time as this I'm with you For such a time as this You're not alone <clears throat> You don't have to fear I am always here When you want to It's all planned out I'm with you now <clears throat> I wonder if I can understand But Don't forget I'm also fully of dread when I could see what lay ahead and I remember loneliness and the emptiness of loss as I prayed in the garden and I stumbled to the cross For such a time as this such a time as this I'm with you For such a time as this I love you so You're not alone You don't have to So planned out I'm with you now <clears throat> You think your life is broken but Listen child, you are not forgotten Just focus on my face And there's nothing new And nothing I can do To make it through this journey Just lean into me For such a time as this such a time as this I'm with you for such a time as this I love you so you're not alone
with you now. Such a time as this, I made you. For such a time as this, I'm with you. For such a time as this, I love you so. not alone. For such a time as this, when we're thrown into a pit, when our family thinks we're dead, when your own family is out to get you, for such a time as this, the Lord is with you. We are all dysfunctional. So, what does that mean? What is a dysfunctional family? What comes to mind is the holidays, our Thanksgiving dinners, right? Everybody's sitting around the table, Christmas dinner. You have all of these differences of opinions, all these differences, right? There's a little cartoon there of kind of what's going on. Oh, hey, there we go. All right, so... You have, there's one slide there, I think it's a cartoon, kind of tells it all. There it is. I don't know if you guys can see that very well or not, but that's kind of a typical Thanksgiving dinner of a, a dysfunctional family. You got a couple of politicians up front there arguing, got the kids being crazy, mom trying to be the best host, dad just give me another glass of wine, and somebody else in the back there hitting the sauce, right? So we are all dysfunctional. Got to be honest here, right? It is what it is. We are a dysfunctional people, right? And then the other one there, the one cartoon. And then who's the greatest dysfunctional family of all? The Griswolds. There we go. They're, they're there somewhere. I think it's the next slide. Yeah, there you go. And uh, everybody's got a cousin Eddie, I think, right? Somebody's got a cousin Eddie, right? Talking about dysfunction. With all that being said, what exactly is a dysfunctional family? A dysfunctional family is, look around, They're right here, we are. But the true definition of a dysfunctional family is any family with more than one person in it. Think about that. If there's more than one person in a room, you're going to be dysfunctional because we have our own opinions, we have our own pride, we have our own whatever, right? The bottom line is we are all dysfunctional. We need to overcome that. But like the song said here, for such a time as this, God has given us all gifts for such a time as this when we're in the pits Right? When we're sold to slavery, whatever the case may be, God has given us gifts. We may not know what they are until the time comes. Joseph didn't know, but he was sharing. And what happened? He threw him in a pit. Right? Threw him in a cistern. Because they didn't know either. But we'll learn later in this series of how his gift came to fruit. Just because we are dysfunctional, don't give up. Don't give in. And trust God that he'll get us through it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I give thanks for your word today, Lord. That, uh, and I give thanks for the Holy Spirit, Lord. That, to know that you are with us during these times that we, we have doubts. When we, our own family turns against us, Lord that you are there in a time like this. I ask that your protection, your wisdom, just be the light to our path, Lord, 
in this dysfunctional world. I ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, Pastor Kathy will follow up on this about when Joseph is sold to Potiphar and what happens next. See you guys next Saturday. God bless you all.